Today, we've got a big update from Kling, namely the 2.1 version of their AI video model clearly coming on the heels of VO3. So has a challenger appeared? Well, yes and no. There are certainly some things that Kling is doing better, I mean, cost being one of them. And while 2.1 is still a bit up there in terms of cost, there is now a lower cost option. So today, we'll dive into Kling 2.1 to see where it's excelling and what it's still missing. Naturally, of course, we will do a a bit of a VO3 shootout, and I do have some news on, you know, I don't want to call it a price break, but at least more generations and like a couple of like kind of free generations via VO3 as well. All right, let's dive in. So obviously the world of AI video has been pretty rocked by the release of VO3. That said, we knew that it wouldn't be long before other video models were trying to close the gap, and it does look like Kling is first out of the gate with the 2.1 model. Now one thing to note is that what we're looking at here today is early access, but I have been told that the model will release by the end of the week. And just to set expectations, remember this is a point one update, not like a full numbered version. But I do have to say through testing testing it out, I mean, I think it actually does kind of show some of the inherent weaknesses within VO. We'll go over that in just a little bit, but in the meantime, uh, Kling 2.1 is touting the usual improvements of prompt coherence and image quality. Again, I wasn't expecting anything super massive in terms of features. This is not Kling 3.0. Kicking it off with this eh, kind of Michael Bay inspired hero shot. Uh, I think we generated this up in Kling 2.0. This was after a weekend of watching uh, the first three Transformer movies back to back because, well, I had brain cells to kill. Overall, I did think that this was a, you know, a pretty solid output from Kling 2.0. Uh, lots of, you know, kind of stuff happening in the background of this shot. Um, you know, nice camera movement. Yeah, overall, decent. Let's try it out in 2.1. The 2.1 output, and obviously this is image to video run with the exact same prompt. Um, yeah, I mean, there's just an overall level of a lot more clarity in this output. There are definitely a lot less explosions and, uh, you know, lens flares and kind of particle effects happening in the background. But I think that actually manages to hold everything together a lot more. Additionally, uh, our character's features and face actually kind of lighten up through the course of the generation, uh, but stay very, you know, accurate and consistent, uh, much more so than the 2.0 version. Here's another Kling 2.0 image to video that we've always had a little bit of trouble running, uh, given her resemblance to Megan Fox, I can only presume that this was generated in the same weekend. I gotta say, like, 2.0 went a little bit on the nut side here. Uh, I actually have kind of appreciate it. Definitely gets the, like, the Michael Bay vibes with, like, everything that's going on here, but it is also kind of a mess. A glorious mess that I could watch over and over and over again, but it is a mess. 2.1 definitely seems to get the assignment. It's, oh, you know, it's a, it's not Megan Fox with the flamethrower. It's a flamethrower. It's not a, you know, an exploding laser gun. It's just a it's just a flamethrower. Uh, there are some problems here. You'll notice with her arm back here as she reaches around, it kind of occludes through this strap. But, you know, you could probably run this a few other times and, and get a decent generation out of it. Overall, that does seem to be more or less my findings with 2.1 is that it does feel a lot more controlled. Not to say that it can't get hyperactive from time to time, as we see in this uh, Superman versus Godzilla shot. I mean, there's definitely a lot packed into this shot at some point. Like, yeah, Godzilla's mouth kind of hits a water main. But then uh, after that, he comes up and it's now sand and dust. Um, yeah, I mean, like, sure, it's a bit of a mess, but I'm OK with it because it's Superman versus Godzilla. And yes, Warner Brothers, I am available to produce this for you. I'd say in general, for the most part, things are just a lot more on the stable side. Uh, take this like kind of French New Wave uh, Vogue inspired shot that we ran in 2.0. Yeah, good up until uh, that guy teleports into that woman. Whereas in 2.1, we don't get as much like morph and distortion. Things are uh, actually a little bit on the sharper side as well. I do want to point out it may not necessarily stop being weird considering that this guy just decides to kind of like climb into the side of this bus. Uh, that happens around like the six second mark. That tends to be the case. I'm not exactly sure how they're doing extensions, but I am convinced that there is some sort of handoff uh, at around the five second mark. For example, here uh, we had our prompt uh, of our the woman walks forward and then the man uh, turns and walks behind her. Um, and you can see at the you know the five second mark, well, it kind of ignores our directions and and our, and our guy just walks off in the opposite direction. But on a subsequent roll, we do get the action that we requested. 
Interestingly, though, it happens at almost the exact same time, uh, you know, as our guy starts walking away in the other generation. One shot that I did think very much highlighted the improvements to the 2.1 model is uh, this uh, kind of like dystopian revolution shot, uh, which I thought was pretty good uh, in 2.0. There are some problems like with the, the fire uh, burning here, like that guy's beard should be on fire. Uh, but in general, you know, I thought this looked pretty decent. Running that exact same image and prompt in 2.1 yields us this as a result. Uh, fire is definitely not out of control in the background. And uh, as it the, as we push in here, you can really see a lot more like natural skin texture uh, on our main character here. Walk cycles do seem to be pretty good, as we see in this shot, kind of inspired by the uh, Taylor Sheridan show Lioness. I'm not a Yellowstone fan, but uh, I can't stop watching Lioness. I will say that 2.1 definitely does like its handheld camera movement, and that does help mask any kind of like inconsistencies. Uh, I will say that there's this guy in the background who keeps kind of stumbling around, but I think he got a rock in his shoe. We'll talk about text to video in the next section a little bit more, but I just I quickly did want to point out um, that, you know, fight sequences in 2.1 are still pretty much the you know, same thing that we saw in VO3, very like rock'em sock'em robots, uh, just guys kind of punching each other, not really reacting to any of the physics. Although I will say a lot more camera movement uh, in 2.1 as opposed to VO3. So before we head over to like the face to face, I did want to showcase a couple of Kling 2.0 community outputs. Marcio Lima gives us this. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if it's Abe's World Odyssey inspired, but it kind of has that vibe to me. Uh, again, showcasing um, and uh, 2.1 loves its handheld camera movement. Uh, additionally, I'm not sure if uh, Marcio used first frame, last frame here. Kind of looks like he did. Amira Zairi gives us this shot, which I think looks really cool. Uh, lots of like awesome energy and motion happening here. Love the color grading and vibe. Pierre Chevier gives us this output that, uh, at least to me, says, uh, tell me it's Cloverfield without telling me it's Cloverfield. Ludovic Creator gives us this guy just chopping greens. I, I think it's kind of important to go back uh, to just like these really just like basic shots from time to time. I know we like to do like sci-fi extravaganzas all the time, uh, but I think that when when you see just you know, a guy chopping greens like this is this is really good. And rounding out Hideyuki Ashizawa gives us this uh, sea serpent just kind of splashing around. This is really good. I mean, like, just think about like 10 years ago, this would have taken like an entire VFX team like a week to accomplish. So all of that kind of brings us to the 800 pound gorilla in the room. How does Kling 2.1 compare against VO3? Well, I do have to say, at least on the text to video side, I mean, Google still has the edge. Beyond the now famous fact that dialogue and sound effects are integrated into VO3's outputs, as we have seen many times with uh, YouTuber interviews on the street which is something that Kling does not do. They do have a lip sync feature and kind of a sound effect generator feature, but uh, I mean, definitely the Google model is a step above that. That said, even running a prompt inspired by Pierrick's uh, Cloverfield, but not um, in VIA, we end up with a result like this. Whereas running that same prompt in Kling 2.1, uh, it gives us, well, I, I'm just gonna say it, it gives us something that is not quite as good. And that is not to say that Kling 2.1 isn't capable of producing good text-to-video results. Uh, for example, I did rerun our uh, We Can Fix the End of Game of Thrones VO output that I did the other day, this time without subtitles. My queen, we have translated the scrolls. We have the magic to fix the ending. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know why the queen ended up hacking up a hairball at the end of that. I definitely know it has something to do with Hodor. Meanwhile, Kling with the exact same prompt gives us this. Again, the characters can't talk because, well, they can't talk. Um, you know, I think it's I think it's fairly serviceable in terms of prompt adherence. It got everything that we asked for. Uh, in fact, actually, I think the throne looks a little bit cooler in this one. It does have a little bit more of like kind of a green screeny like vibe to it. But, you know, for the most part, again, I, I, I think it's serviceable. So I really think that it's an image to video that Kling holds its edge. I, I have said many times in the past that I do not think image to video is VO's strong point. Even going back to that Michael Bay inspired shot that we looked at at the beginning of this video, uh, the VO version of this, uh, same prompt and everything, I just, it, 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 it's got problems. And again, I'm not saying in all cases, but in a lot of cases, I am finding Kling 2.1's image to video to feel a lot more natural. Uh, take, for example, here, uh, the prompt here is simply, uh, the woman invites you to sit next to her on the couch. The Kling output comes out like this, which admittedly does look a little bit on the strange side, but she's really fancy, and I don't know how fancy people invite other people to sit down the couch next to them. Whereas with VO3, yeah, we do get the benefit of added sound, but well, I'll let you see.
I mean, somebody definitely dropped the billiard ball in the background, and I'm not sure exactly, is she inviting us to sit on the armrest? That's not very cool, fancy lady. I do have to note that I got significant more pushback in image to video on VO3 than what well, I ever got in VO2. Uh, for example, that like Superman versus Godzilla thing. I mean, that was just like a straight up no way. But interestingly, it was fine with doing it in text to video. It's just that this was the output. Again, anyone at Warner Brothers, just feel free to give me a call. But there were others that I ended up getting pushback on, like this one that I did generate in Kling 2.1. And admittedly, when she turns, she does look a little bit on the Evangeline Lilly side. Uh, but still, like this got this got pushed back. There was also this one in which the prompt was just stands up and looks determined. Now, I will give you she is in a you know pretty tight latex black outfit there. But, you know, no mention of the gun, no uh, no violence or anything like that. And, uh, you know, VO3 was like, nope, not going to do it. And look, there were a few other spots where Kling 2.1 just straight up outperformed VO3. For example, I did want to see how both would handle a 9x16 image, so I thought it'd be a good time to check in on our girl, Daniela Van Den Ock, dressed as a pirate. So the prompt here was nothing more than she waves hello, because we haven't seen her in a while. Uh, Kling does do a weird thing with the aspect ratio where it kind of stretches it out a little bit, but overall, I mean, I think th like, this is a great output. I mean, I know that all of you are paying a great amount of detail to the textures in her hat, the catch lights in her eyes, and then clearly like the water physics in the background. That's all you're looking at. Meanwhile, I gotta say the VO3 output, kind of a mess. Not only does it take it out to 16 by 9, but, you know, it decides to go into like full like 2001 era CGI. In general, stylized animation looks are not very good in VO3. Uh, for example, this shot, heavily stylized animated shot, um, I think the, the prompt here is that she talks considering a dangerous plan. Um, there are some like weird kind of like frame rate issues that are going on here. It's like this, it stutters just a bit, but it also kind of has like uh, like an animated look to it. Whereas VO3, well, it, it went in a whole other direction here. And again, to note, um, if you're using image to video, VO3 will not produce any dialogue. You occasionally get sound effects, but you don't really get dialogue. So uh, yeah, uh, of the two, clearly I prefer at least the Kling output. Now in terms of cost, well, Kling 2.1 does now have a turbo mode that will only run you 70 credits per generation. Although obviously you are taking a quality hit when compared to the uh, master version, as they call it, which is, you know, the the big boy version, which does still run 200 credits. On the VO side, there has at least been some movement. Uh, generations now cost 100 credits as opposed to 150 credits. And if you're on the ultra plan, yeah, the expensive one, you can generate an additional five text to video outputs per day on Gemini. I mean, it's not much, but it is at least a step in the right direction. All that said, Kling 2.1 should be available to all of you within the next few days. It may even be available to you right now, depending on when you're watching this. I am sure that this is not the last big update that we'll see over the next few weeks. There are a number of other heavy hitters out there that are lurking. And of course, as they drop, I will brew up more coffee. In the meantime, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.